So we're going to learn how to find the derivative of inverse trig functions implicitly and use that to come up with general rules that we can rely on for the future. All right, so we'll start off with uh, the idea again that the result of an inverse trig function is some angle. And the subject of an inverse trig function is a ratio. So if I look at this as y equals the arc sine of u, I can kind of change it all up by saying, well, first off, the result is going to be some angle y. So I'm going to draw a reference triangle in the first quadrant. Now that angle, because again, arc sine of u is going to be resulting in some angle. Uh, we're calling that angle y, for lack of a better uh, term. We could call it theta if we wanted to, so we'd be looking for d theta dx. Either way, it doesn't really make a difference. All right, but I already wrote y, so we'll go with y. Maybe for another problem, we'll use a theta. All right, so, but I am going to hang on to this and just kind of put it aside so I can use the, the same diagram for another problem. All right, so if I take the sine of both sides, sine of y would be equal to u, with u being the ratio opposite over hypotenuse. All right, so that must be a u over a 1. So the opposite side is u. The hypotenuse is 1. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we'd solve for the missing side. You know, the good old a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a squared plus u squared is equal to 1 squared. So we're looking at a equal to the square root of, well, that's poor quality uh, radical, uh, 1 minus u squared. All right, so that's our, that's our missing side here. All right. So we have that information, which is great. Now, what I need to do is find the derivative. Now, I can't find the derivative of this one because I don't know the rule. That's why we're here. What I can do is look at u equals the sine of y and find the derivative of u with respect to y. So du dy would be equal to cosine of y. All right, now a couple of things. One, ultimately I want a dy dx because remember we're saying that, and I'll highlight it in pink, that arc sine of u is the same as y. So this is really saying dy dx. So. I have du dy, I need dy dx. So let's put this cosine of y over a 1. And at, at the very least, get the, y, the dy on top, on the top of the fraction. So dy du would be equal to 1 over the cosine of y. So that's a step in the right direction. Now I'm going to smidge this equal sign over, give myself a little room. I'm going to get a little sneaky here because I, I can make a dy du into a dy dx. All I'd have to do is multiply by du dx. That would cancel out the du's and introduce a dx. If I do it on one side, I have to do it on the other. All right. Now, looking at this, and I'm going to just kind of reproduce it. over here somewhere, we'd have dy dx, all right, because again, collectively these two things, these two factors would come together to give us a dy dx. I just need to somehow get that cosine of y taken care of, all right? Cosine of y is adjacent over hypotenuse, but it's really 1 over cosine y. 1 over cosine is the same as secant. So secant of y du dx. 
secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. The hypotenuse is 1. The adjacent is the square root of 1 minus u squared. If I can get this radical to stay put. Alright, I'm going to live with it like that. And so, in the end, I mean, another way of writing du dx would be u prime. I could actually clean this up kind of nicely. And I guess I can live with that. That's the same as saying u prime. We could say dy dx is equal to u prime over the square root. I don't even know why. I hope to autocorrect that into a radical. Oh, it worked that time. 1 minus u squared. Because it works often enough that I keep trying. All right, so u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared. All right, and so that's my derivative of the inverse sine function, or the arc sine. All right, so that's, that's great news. Now i got a rule. So I'm going to pop that down here. Now I'm going to tell you that the three most important trig functions in existence are sine, tangent, and secant because the co-functions are just complements of those really important trig functions, sine, tangent, and secant. All right? This is no exception because if I know the arc sine derivative rule, the arc cosine derivative rule is just a negation of that. All right, if you want, you know, you can kind of go through this whole process again just using an arc cosine and, and verify that, but you could also just take my word for it. All right. It's like the old Tommy Boy reference. So, arc tangent. Now, I'll use the, um, like I said, I'll use theta this time just to kind of make it look a little more trigonometric. Oh, no, undo. Copy. Paste. All right, so I'm going to hang on to this. I'll just kind of put it over there. And I'll put this over here somewhere. All right, so for arc tangent, so what I'll do is I'll call this theta, because, again, it's going to be some angle. So we're saying theta is equal to the arctan of u. If I take the tangent of both sides, I'm getting tangent of theta is equal to u. Tangent ratio is opposite over adjacent. The understood one there gives us a theta. Well, we have the theta. The opposite is u. The adjacent is 1. The hypotenuse is going to be the square root of, well, if you add squared values together, 1 squared plus u squared, but it simplifies down to just the square root of 1 plus u squared. All right, so that tells me that u is equal to the tangent of theta, and if I want to take the derivative, it's du d theta is equal to secant squared theta, all right? Now, ultimately, again, I want to have a d theta dx. So let me take the reciprocal. I'm going to put this over a 1. I'm going to take the reciprocal, reciprocal, d theta du is going to be equal to 1 over secant squared. 1 over secant squared theta is the same as saying cosine squared theta. All right. So now it's just a matter of making some substitutions and getting our uh, x involved in this whole thing. So I'm going to do what I did before, and that is smidge this over, tack on a du dx, to both sides. If 
the left hand side is just now going to be a d theta dx which is what we were going for which is good news cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse all right so adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine but we need to square the adjacent over hypotenuse so that's one over the square root of one plus u squared as a quantity squared times du dx which is going to give us one over one plus u squared times du dx which could be written or rewritten as u prime over one plus u squared and so that's our derivative of the arctan of u all right, so now we have a couple more rules for our... Oh, I keep hitting delete when I keep meaning to hit copy. Copy. All right, so I'm going to pop that in there. And I'm going to pop it in over here. But I'm going to negate it on this side because that co-function relationship is going to hold up. All right. So then lastly... We have the arc secant, and again, we got our diagram here. And again, like I said, you could use theta, you could use y, it doesn't make a difference. Some people like dy dx for the familiarity of it, but d theta dx works just fine, all right? Uh, because it's unit circle related, we tend to want to go that route, but you can go either way, all right? So theta is equal to the arc secant, of u, take the secant of both sides, so secant of theta is equal to u, all right, the, the secant ratio is hypotenuse over adjacent, so u over 1, so hypotenuse over adjacent, all right, now there is a little ingredient that we got to be mindful of here because this is the first time the unknown u has been the hypotenuse and in the other cases it's been they've been legs now in the case of the unit circle the, the radius we we need that to be a positive value all right so what we want to do is we want to actually guarantee that this value is going to be positive in order to do that we're going to slap some absolutes around it all right it was irrelevant before because the hypotenuse in both cases was either a one, like in the first one, or the result of uh, the sum of the squares of the legs. If you square two values and slap a radical over it, it's going to be positive anyway. Here I want to make sure that the unknown ratio that I'm working with is going to be a positive ratio. All right? So that's just something to keep in mind. So the missing side, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'll actually do it out this time. We're going to have 1 squared plus b squared is equal to the absolute value of u squared, which is just going to be u squared. All right, so b squared is equal to u squared minus 1 making b equal to the square root of u squared minus 1. All right. So we're good to go there. u is going to be equal to secant of theta. The derivative of this equation, du d theta, is going to be equal to the derivative of secant is secant tangent. So secant theta tangent theta. All right, reciprocal. It just kind of hopped out on me. d theta du is going to be equal to, well, the reciprocal of, we could say the reciprocal of secant is cosine and the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent, but it's really more about the ratios. So this is hypotenuse over adjacent, and this is opposite over adjacent. 
So really it's a matter of saying that I want the reciprocal of those ratios, all right? So I want adjacent, I'll give myself a little bit more room here. I want this to become, maybe that arrow is a little long, adjacent over hypotenuse and adjacent over opposite. Multiplied together, so whatever the adjacent value is, I'm going to square that. And the hypotenuse is my absolute u. And the opposite is the square root of u squared minus 1. Ah, that moved on me. I had it, too. All right. Now, again, just like all the other cases, we don't want d theta du. We want d theta dx. So I'm going to multiply by du dx. which in turn is going to give me a fresh new expression based off of the previous one, so it's not that new. So u prime over the absolute u times the root of u squared minus 1. So those are our rules for derivatives. And so applying them really isn't going to be that bad. You know, you, you see things like uh, that fourth example down there, and, you know, like you might say I beg to differ, but it's, it's really not. It's just getting used to it. It's the anti-differentiation that's going to be a little on the tricky side, right? Because not only is it a matter of recognizing a rule, it's applying the rule, too. So we'll, we'll, get, we'll cross that bridge. But for now, let's just work on differentiating. So arc sine of 2x, the derivative is going to be based off of this being my u. All right, so the u prime, or du dx, is the derivative of 2x, which is just a 2. So really, it's just a matter of popping it into this rule. So 2 over the square root of 1 minus u squared, where u is equal to 2x. So it's 2 over the square root of 1 minus 4x squared. So it's really not that bad arc tangent of 3x and you can see you can see how you can start skipping some steps like that intermediate step you probably didn't really need to show I will do the highlighting though so this is my u u prime is equal to 3 so 3 over 1 plus u squared u squared is going to be 9x squared, so 1 plus 9x squared. All right, next one, e to the 2x, that's my u. u prime is going to be e to the 2x multiplied by the derivative of the exponent, which is a 2, so 2e two e to the 2x. All right, now this is a secant rule. So 2e to the 2x up top. On the bottom, the absolute value. And you'll see in some cases the absolutes end up not being necessary, but I'll put them, I'll put them in initially anyway. Uh, so e to the 2x before simplifying. Um, the square root of u squared minus 1, so e to the 2x squared minus 1. So e is a positive number 
if you raise a positive number to a power, whether that power is positive or negative, it doesn't make a difference. The result is going to be positive. All right. So this whole thing can be simplified because of that one realization. All right. So that these absolutes in this case aren't necessary because e to the 2x is guaranteed to be positive. All right, so that'll cancel this with that. Now, the e to the 2x squared is really the same as saying e to the 4x. All right, power to a power, you multiply the powers. So it actually cleans up, I don't want to say nicely, but nicer than what it was, 2 over the square root of e to the 4x minus 1. Alright, so not too crazy. Alright, but the last one is the cosine of the arc sine. So it's a little bit of chain rule going on here. So we have an inner function, it's composite. The inner function is the arc sine function. So you think about chain rule, what do you do? You take the derivative around the inner function, cosine of the inner function, cosine of whatever is contained in there, would have a derivative that's equal to negative sine of whatever is in there times the derivative of whatever's in there. All right. So the cosine becomes negative sine of the arc sine of 3x. Well, that's kind of nice because a function and its inverse will cancel to the argument. All right, the argument here being 3x. So I'm looking at negative 3x. Then I just need to differentiate the arc sine part of it. All right. So, for that, we have a u. So, this is my quote-unquote u. u prime is 3. So, we're looking at 3 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. So, 1 minus 9x squared. We're looking at negative 9x over... the root of 1 minus 9x squared. All right, so that takes care of that. Now, you could have also gone the triangle route. This is what I was alluding to on the previous page. Uh, maybe alluding is not the right word. I was just flat out saying it. If you have something like this, you might look at it and say, well, what would I prefer to do? Would I want to take the derivative of it as is, or would I want to try to manipulate it first and see what happens? So let me just uh, kind of cordon this off a little bit. I'm going to draw a triangle. I accidentally tapped my uh, calculator there, so just kind of ignore that. All right, so we have f of x, again, cosine, of, I'll write it as inverse sine, just for space. Let's clear this out. All right, so this is some angle theta that we, if we knew what x was, we'd be able to figure out, but we don't, so we can't. All right, so theta is equal to the inverse sine of 3x. which means sine of theta is equal to 3x. A G, uh, opposite over hypotenuse All right, that's really what we're up against here because it's, it's a sine function. Using the Pythagorean theorem we would come up with the square root of 1 minus 9x squared cosine of theta cosine 
of the given angle theta adjacent over hypotenuse would be equal to the square root of 1 minus 9x squared. All right, so that's telling us that f of x can actually be replaced with the square root of 1 minus 9x squared. Or 1 minus 9x squared to the 1 half power. So if I want f prime, by chain rule, as something raised to the 1 half power, that's 1 half of that something raised to the negative 1 half power times the derivative of the inner expression, which is going to be negative 18x. All right, so I'm going to have a negative 18x. When you multiply and clean it up, you actually end up with this derivative. Just trying to make it look a little nicer. Oop. I wanted to use my lasso there, not the marker. All right, and so it's a different way of doing it, but still would get the job done. All right, and both both ways involve a, you know some serious trigonometry.